Wow, hi YouTube. Um, it's the half term holidays. Children are at Holiday Club. Spring has uh, just about sprung and um, I've decided to uh, have a little bit of a cook up. So what I'm going to do is put some ingredients on the table. I've got my kind of fire bundles, fire pits out. I bought some beautiful ingredients and um, it's going to be a kind of welcome back. And of course it wouldn't be a roach video without a bit of uh, cooking. Um, while I'm cooking, I'm going to use the uh, um, big Chris Kane survival knife and I've got a little kind of bushcraft knife of my own that um, uh, I'm going to be using as uh, the only utensils to make this film really. So this is a kind of cook up in the field, um, cook a proper dinner, you could put on the, family, on the table for the family, cooked in the field. Okay, so when I'm processing my firewood, predominantly I like to sit down behind a block and that way, you know, if what you're using kind of misses the work, it can't um, hit you, very simply. I'm also uh, going to use a chicken stick. Just a stick you use to hold the work still while you process it. This wood is uh, quite wet, but um, as you can see, you know, this uh, Chris Cain survival tool is a very capable thing. Like I say, if you want to see a proper review on it, uh, it's um, in the description below. But, uh, mate, one knife, take it with you, do everything you want it to do. Don't think you could pick a better one. Very similar in design to uh, Lofty Wiseman's um, survival knife. Uh, both of these knives are made by Stanley Forths in uh, Sheffield, England. So um, I think Stanley Forth started manufacturing knives, uh, don't quote me on it, but 1864 or something like that is springing to mind. And um, you know, I mean, knives made in Sheffield, England were traded to the American frontiersmen. You know, they were family heirlooms handed down from father to son. They were kind of highly valued uh, items and uh, still making them today. So both of these knives come from Stanley Forth's Sheffield, England. This is where um, Lofty Wiseman has his knife made. So there's some dry wood in the middle of this as I'm kind of zipping it down, uh, which will be perfect for our fire lay. Once we've got a little bit of uh, fire going, what I normally do is just pop one of these bundles straight on the top. That's my kindling, fire's normally off. But like I say, I'm gonna be building an upside down fire so that I can get some good embers to uh, get this food on the go. Okay, that's our wood processed. Now let's get this uh, fire lay done. So this is straight off the wood pile. Some nice big stuff on the bottom. Then as we build it up, it gets slightly smaller. Is uh, Old Faithful. I've just got a little bit of uh, lint out of the tumble dry with a bit of uh, Vaseline on it and some pine cones that I picked up last time I was in the forest. I'm going to use my Zippo lighter with the um, bit of bicycle inner tube over it. So I'm literally just going to light this up, put it in the bottom. Pine cones on top. Pine cones are full of pine oil, so they spark up a treat. And then now, a little bit of kindling, maybe one of my fire bundles on top of that.
So the Chris Kane survival tool, the history of this knife goes back to um, Lofty Wiseman. So Lofty Wiseman, SAS survival author, former um, chief instructor at Jungle Warfare School. Lofty left the British Army from uh, 22 SAS in 1968. Bushcraft authority in the UK, he designed a knife. Um, Chris Kane was a friend of Lofty Wiseman. Very simply, Lofty Wiseman and Chris Kane's father were in the British Army together. Chris had an association with Lofty Wiseman. He is a uh, survival expert with in his own right. This was Chris's um, survival tool. So this was the Chris Kane survival tool. I used to sell an awful lot of Chris Kane knives. I think I sold about five or six hundred over the years. Um, I used to export a hundred knives a month to Dave Canterbury at Wilderness Outfitters but um, Dave invited Chris out to America his knives were made in uh, I think it's Black Horse Knives and um, that's the last time anyone saw Chris Kane I think that was uh, God a good few years ago now um, unfortunately uh, this knife isn't in production anywhere in the world. I'm sure if you contacted Black Horse Knives they'd make you one but um, to my knowledge you can't buy this knife off of the shelf anywhere in the world. This is a one-stop survival tool. This is one knife that you could walk off into the woods and do anything with. Comes in this beautiful leather, black leather sheath. Take the knife out. These are why kind of personal ones that I had made when I first got involved in the project. I had half a dozen made to my own specs and uh, this one was the the second one so I think I made um, about six um, pre-production run knives when I came on board we changed the specifications slightly these were um, the ideas that I had to take the project forward and um, half a dozen knives were made and I purchased all of them so uh, I've had my roach logo put on uh, my ones and I also had my kind of tagline put on the knives kind of always by your side um, same the knife is uh, um, 1075 kind of spring steel the uh, Rockwell is uh, 5254 uh, full tang black Macarta handles red liners beautiful dangler leather sheath um, if you want a more in-depth review of this knife I did one several years ago it's a pretty good vid if I say so myself if you want to know about this knife and the history of it and it is in the description below so you can click on that and it's a review solely on this knife and how to use it but today these two knives are what I'm going to be doing using to have a little bit of a cook up okay then we'll be cooking uh, Hogan's gonna have uh, sliced lamb's <laughs> livers and uh, lamb's hearts. So I'm just gonna uh, wrap those up in a bit of silver foil, put those in the edge of the fire. Might make another fire lay on the ground, you know, just to uh, do these bits for him. Okay, so these are our ingredients. Got a lovely bit of uh, beef. Got a swede, probably gonna use half of that. Uh, parsnip, couple of uh, potatoes carrots, got some herbs, a Spanish onion and uh, that's about it. Going to put those in the camp oven. Uh, it's all going to be done out here on open fire and uh, let's see how we get it. What's this? What's that? Yup yup bubble gum. Oh, wow, hopefully you're so lucky. Lamb's hearts, everybody. Hoagie's favourite. How many do you want, Hoag? I want two. Sure? Yes, sure. Give me a minute. Okay, two lamb's hearts. In the fire for Hoag. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just sear off this uh, bit of meat. Just 
Let's wait for that warm up. Let's open minute. up this beautiful bit of meat. Hogan will uh, <laughs> like to lick the blood off of that, will he? Okay, there's that beautiful bit of meat. I'm going to take the I'm just going to make incisions into the meat. Push a bit of garlic into it. I've got some rosemary as well. Stick a bit in there. Not really associated with beef, but let's uh, Around this way. Okay. Good boy. Yes. That's a fine time. Oh, wow. Was that nice? Good boy. Good boy. Okay. So what we need to do is to lift the meat off the bottom of the pan. If it touches the bottom of the pan anywhere, what happens is the meat will burn. So I've just used a bit of veg just to lift it off the bottom. Okay, lid on, it's going on a campfire. About an hour and 45 minutes, we'll come back and see how it's doing. Oh, a couple of lamb's hearts in the fire for Hogan. I knew we'd get round to that. So the big knife, um, like I say, you've got to be able to do camp chores with it as well, sort of everything. The idea is that you take one knife into the field and you do everything with it. I haven't done this in a few years, but um, this little part of the blade here is designed so you can choke up on it and you can do fine sort of carving tasks. But it's also completely possible to you food with it. As I've done it before. If you have a look at the other video in the bottom of the description box, it's quite a um, an in-depth film I made years and years and years ago just on this knife. But uh, that's the trick with it. We did experiment, believe it or not, with different grinds on the blade. You know, so we were going to make the tip of the blade more like a uh, sort of scalpel sharp, and the belly of the blade. Uh, you know, a more suitable grind 
for um, your chopping. But um, people at Stanley Forks have been making knives for well over 100 years. And uh, you can't go to a company like that with the expertise that they've got and uh, they're not listen. So uh, I took their counsel. Um, I did make a prototype with the different blades on it, you know, but um, we went with the... Just giving the veg a bit of a wash. Now I'm going to uh, chop it up, get it ready to go in the pot. This is our swede. Like I say, swede's quite a hard, quite a solid vegetable. It's um, a little bit firmer than a potato. Some people kind of dice it. I'm just going to uh, put it into slices, sort of chunks. But this is the this is the test. This is the one knife you can do everything with. So it's alright having a massive knife that you can chop a tree down with, <laughs> but at some point you're going to be able to do, uh, going to have to do delicate food prep, and uh, that sort of stuff is uh, not impossible, but a little bit more difficult to do with an axe. I mean that's the alternative. I had a conversation with Dave Canterbury some years ago now, and uh, Dave said if he was going into the woods, he would take an axe, and I think most people would. You know, but the idea is that you just take one thing. You know, this is your kind of your lone survivor, your uh, your bear grills, your Ed Stafford type setup, where you can only take one thing. Spanish onion here just adds a bit of sweetness. Okay, so that's our uh, veg all ready to go in. Try and cut it all up the same sort of size, similar sizes. That way it all cooks roughly the same, um, same time. So, the meat's on, that's all our mixed veg, that's going in as well, maybe a couple of oxo cubes, uh, and um, that's it, another hour, and then we'll serve it, see what we do. Whoa! A little bit of fluid. And a flavour bomb, just for good measure. So, way to use a big knife for uh, fine uh, camp tasks is got to have a lanyard on it, put the lanyard up just past your elbow, take the back of the knife. So now the knife, the weight of the knife is taken by your arm and not by your hand. And now you can uh, 
you do fine carving. There's no reason why we couldn't eat this, it's uh it's hot. <laughs> no, it's uh it's all good meat, you know. But uh we've you know as a society we're eating less and less awful nowadays aren't we? Same again, weight of the knife is taken by your arm and then you just kind of use it as a scalpel or as a normal knife. These are just uh, lamb's hearts. This is what I was um, using as uh, treats when I was training Hogan. And uh, mate, he would do almost anything for it. Uh, still a bit hot, but uh, looks like Hogan's the first one to be fed. I think he's used to uh, having his bowl on the floor, but. Um a little bit hot. A bit hot, Hoke? Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> He's tucking into that a treat. Okay, so just starting to lose the light. Uh, got a sieve out of the truck and a saucepan. Uh, idea is that I'm going to drain off the gravy and open it up, see what we got. that hook. Oh, the juices of the meat smell absolutely fantastic. Get your super nose out of the way, Hoke. Away! Oh, let's take the meat out. Yum, yum, bubble. Gum. And see if we can get our vegetables. Let's see if we can get any. you do delicate tasks with a big knife yeah so again what we're going to do is we use the lanyard put the knife just above the elbow so now your arm is taking the weight of the knife and uh, not your hand and that's how you use it so you just hold the top of the knife boom and you can make very delicate cuts. So that's the uh, <laughs> the way you use a big knife to do uh, fine tops. Hogan's had his lamb's heart. I've got my beautiful bit of beef with uh, mixed vegetables. It's 
starting to lose the light now. I guess this is where I say please uh, thumbs up, like, share, subscribe and if you're watching on Facebook please follow. As always, any comments, love to hear them. Back soon.